like to let them spot to string him up. You fellas are going to be sorry you mixed up in this. This is one time we ain't taking orders from you. Oh, Christ. Gee, I'm glad you got here. Get me out of this, will you? Well, you got yourself into this, Dusty. Now you'll have to take what's coming to you. Oh, Alibi, are you going to stand there and let them do this to me? I'm sorry, Dusty. It ain't none of my business, confidentially speaking. Oh, a fine couple of pals. A fine couple of pals. Go on with your party. Ready, Cactus, get clear. Let this be a lesson to you, Dusty. Oh, have a hard crash. When you make a bet to sing a song upside down, be sure you don't lose the bet. Now start singing. There was a gal, her name was Sadie Mae. She packed her grip and slowly walked away. She hadn't more than parted when all the trouble started. If she hadn't, then she'd be here today. Now Sadie took the road down by the creek <laughs> and came face to face with a city chic. Now Sadie was a beauty and the chic, he was a cutie. So she made a dive and nabbed him by the feet. Oh, the grass grows high on the mountain. There's a grave in the valley below. He got her on a run with a long squirrel of the sun. She's gone where the good, where the good hillbillies go. Oh, gee. <laughs> now, Elmer, he loves Sadie all his life. He wanted her for her to be his wife. There sure was trouble brewing when he seen what she was doing. Uncle Larry, are you sure we're on the range, Buster's Ranch? Well, I'm sure this is their ranch. Looks more like the annex to an insane asylum. I'm not saying it isn't. Those are the range busters over there. We'll see what's up. But the gun went off and knocked her in the creek. Yodely! Yodely! Oh, the grass grows high on the mountain. Oh. Go on, what are you stopping for? Oh. Howdy, Crash. Larry, you old buckaroo. Now cut him down, boys, and uh, let him drop on his head. It's about time you came to see us. Crash, this is my niece, Miss Willard. When she heard I was driving out from Phoenix, she figured she'd like to come along for the ride. You're the range busters? That's right, ma'am. My name's Crash Corrigan. And that's my partner, Dusty King. Howdy. How do you do? Hello, Larry. Hello, Dusty. Hi, Larry. Alibi. He sings much better right side up. I'm sure he must. And this is my other sidekick, Alibi Terhune. Hello. How do you do? Oh, can I show you around the ranch, Miss Willard? No, wait a minute, Dusty. I came out here to talk to all of you boys. Dusty is a great hand at roundup. I'll bet you chase them and Dusty rounds them up. <laughs> <laughs> Both die from the start, man. <laughs> They've always been like this, Dory. I'm afraid we'll have to get out of some serious business first, boys. Well, we'll have to get to the ranch house then. It's just over the rise. And when we get there, Alibi will make us some pink lemonade. <laughs> well, I reckon you boys know that I've been a lawyer for Wells Fargo in these parts for a long time. Well, don't tell me they turned you loose. No. <laughs> I'm really in deeper than ever. That's why I drove out to see you boys today. I need your help. We're at your service, Larry. I only hope you don't want us to act like lawyer folks. <laughs> Nothing as easy as that alibi. I want you boys to run down a band of highwaymen. Now that's more in our line. There's a gang of outlaws active in the neighborhood of Stony Creek. Stony Creek? That's a hundred miles or so north of here, ain't it? Up near the border? Yes, and the stage has been held up three times in the past few months. Always with a large shipment of money aboard. And Wells Fargo has to make good. Every dollar. Mm. The law on Stony Creek hasn't had much luck in tracking down the outlaws. So the company put it up to me to get them corralled. And I couldn't think of anyone better able to tackle the job than the range busters. We were just saying today, if something would only happen. Yeah. 
And you give us a nice man to renegades the trail. Larry, you got yourself a three-man posse. Wells Fargo will make it worth your while. You'll be able to buy plenty more cattle after this job. I'm glad you're all going to be in Stony Creek. Don't tell me that you're going to go out law hunting. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like that. I'm going by stage to visit my brother, Ernie, who has a ranch near there. Be sure and look him up, Crash. You'll find him at the Diamond W Ranch. Yes, sir. We sure will. <laughs> or you'll get hurt. Now get moving. Maybe there wasn't nothing to it at all. And maybe there was. Well, we can't figure it out here. Why don't we try and locate the Diamond W Ranch? I don't like the idea of that armor disappearing so sudden-like. Thank you. 
There's been a holdup, Mr. Douglas. I had hoped those outlaws had pulled stakes. Was anybody hurt? No, boss. But the bandit got the money box. Dan, you get over to the sheriff and make a report of it. Jake, take care of your horses. All right. Say, Tim, I reckon that's Ernie Willard's sister sitting there. I'll go over and break the news to her. I'll do it. You see that Jake makes a full report. Miss Willard? Yes. I'm Tim Douglas, Wells Fargo agent. I promised your brother that I'd see you safely to the ranch. Oh, couldn't Ernie come? Is he all right? Of course he is. And I'll see that you get to him pronto. Thank you. What are you going to do about the stick-up, Denver? I'm getting some men together and going out after that outlaw. Maybe Dan and Jake here can give me a right description. Well, I reckon it can. You were up riding range. Where's Dory? Thought you were going to meet her at the relay station. Yeah, I was, but something else turned up. Tim Douglas said he'd see that she was driven out. What's all the excitement? What do you got in that bucket? None of your business. Oh, Wells Fargo. So you're the one who's been holding up the stake. I'd forget anything I saw, Ernie. That's why you bought a half interest in this ranch for a cover up. I'm warning you, keep your mouth shut. I'm turning you over to the sheriff. No, you're not. doesn't seem to be any welcoming committee. Maybe they're all in to dinner. My stomach tells me it's about time to eat. Well, let's go in and find out. Hey, fellas, look. Think it's Ernie Willard? I don't know. We'll have to find somebody that knows him. Between stagecoach holdups and murders, we're going to be right busy. You better take it easy, miss. It's Tex Laughlin, Willard's partner. Miss Willard, do you know these men? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. I knew they were coming to the ranch. You any idea what happened here? Why, no. I haven't the slightest idea. Where's Ernie? Something may have happened to him. Likely it's not. He's out chasing the killers, ma'am. 
Well, I better hurry into town and notify the sheriff. Oh, Miss Willard's back. I reckon we'd better go to the house, Miss. I to bring you this money I took from Tex. He stuck up the stage this morning. He's trying to cover up, Sheriff. He's the one that stuck up the stage. The same horse. I can explain why I'm riding this horse. Well, you'd better explain fast. Who? I just came to the Willard Ranch. Tex Lofler's been shot and killed. Yeah, we're just explaining that to the Sheriff. Let me see your iron, Willard. empty shell. You do your explaining to the judge. We ought to string him up. I'm in charge here and I'm taking him to jail. That's a waste of time, men. He's a renegade and a killer. I'm taking him in and that goes. We got to say now, Sheriff. We'll string him up. I have promised you, darling, that never would a word from my lips cause you pain. Now, alas, all my heart's lost forever. If only you love me again. what happened. These are friends, Ernie. They're the range busters. Maybe you can set us straight. Do you know who killed your partner? Yes, I did. Well, at least he admits it. It was self-defense, sis. Tex is the one who's been sticking up that stage. He came in this afternoon with the money. I caught him red-handed. We shot it out, and I was on the way into town with the stolen money when I ran into the sheriff and his posse. They tried to pin the hole up on me. They were going to string me up. I had to make a getaway. 
Well, you'll just have to keep on being a fugitive until the outlaws are rounded up. But I know Ernie didn't hold up that stage. I was on it, and the bandit's voice was not Ernie's. Well, we believe you, ma'am. But you being Ernie's sister, the sheriff would naturally suppose that you would say anything to clear him. That's the sheriff. Ernie, you can't let them take you. Just stay undercover and leave everything to us. Please, come with me. Sit down, yes. alibi. Come in. Why, hello, Sheriff. Howdy. Howdy. Who are you fellas? I've never seen you around here before. Well, we work here, but we haven't been here long. I'm the new foreman of the Diamond W, and these are two of my men. Anything I can do for you? Yeah, we're looking for Ernie Willard. Oh, uh, well, he's out riding range this afternoon. He should. Well, I'll look around, Sheriff. Is that you, Ernie? Oh, howdy, man. How you doing? Oh, Sheriff, this is Ernie Willard's sister. She came to pay me. I'm glad to know you, Sheriff. And I'm glad to know you, too, ma'am. Did my brother come with you? Well, uh, no, he didn't. I, uh, well, Strike, I, I reckon we'd better be riding. And I'm sorry I bothered you, ma'am. No bother at all, Sheriff. If you see Ernie, will you please tell him to hurry home? I certainly will. Good night. Ernie! Ernie, you'll have to lay low until this whole thing is cleared up. Well, I'm not going to hide. I haven't done anything. Just the same, you'll be more help to us out of jail. Tex Laughlin wasn't in this alone. It'd make it easier for us to work on the rest of them if they thought Ernie cleared out. You're right, Dusty. Well, what do you think I ought to do? You know any place you can hide out? Well, there's, there's, uh, there's a line shack up hidden away up on the north section. That'll do, Crash. Well, better go there and stay. We'll keep in touch with you. I'll do a little tail on my own, Sheriff. Report in the morning, Strike. We're riding till we run him down. Come on. sheriff has. What are you fixing to do? You'll see. So you were tied up with that crooked partner of mine. You'll find out. Jack, just like we figured he would. We got a better hideout for you right here. You take care of him, Ace. I'll ride into town. Here's his gun. There's no shells in it. We got a nice job picked out for you tomorrow. In the meantime, get in there. What are you up to? You'll see. The boys are aiming to make this stick up a good one. Start moving.
Cup. there and act like you're leading that hold up. Remember, if you don't act proper, I got a bead on you. We want that strong bar. Ernie Willard, as sure as you're born. Yes, three of them rode right out from behind the rocks. All dressed in black and with masks over their faces. A yelling, pull up. But did I pull up? No, sir. I threw the whip to those leaders of mine, and we made a run for it. It was a good race until he overtook my leaders. One of them grabbed it by the rein and yelled back, pull up, or I'll jackknife your team and Spill you all over the road. Well, there was nothing else to do except pull up. Then we had to heave over the strong box. When up rode Ernie Willard, as big as life, and no mask over his face. Yes, sir, he, he's the head of that gang, and make no mistake. You're sure it was Ernie Willard? Well, sure, as I'm standing right here. And I say that we ought to hang well, him. Well, something right. done about him, yes, sir. And I say that we ought to hang him. That's what I say. Something ought to be done about him. Douglas tells me that Ernie Willard took part in that holdup today. That's right, Sheriff. And they called him boss. I was just telling the boys here. I can't figure it. With a girl like Dory for her sister. Jake just gave me an idea. Let's head for the ranch. Did you recognize any of the others? Never you one of them. They were all dressed in black and had masks over their faces. Dory! Oh, Dory! Dory? We got some news for you. Have you heard from Ernie? Well, come on over here and sit down. We'll tell you all about it. All right. At least we know he's alive. Oh. The outlaws have got him. That's breaking the news gentle-like. You can always depend on old alibi to mess things up. Well, I only said what is a fact, didn't I? Well, you, you, you see, it's like this. Uh, we know that they have to keep him alive. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean that he... the stage was held up today. And the outlaws used Ernie to make it look like he was leading them. But we know that's not true. And to prove it? We're going to set a trap for those bandits. Yippee! Now for the dirty work. Let's go get them. But how are we to do that? By putting a big shipment of cash on the stage. We're going to call on Larry Meadows to furnish the money. And then let the outlaws take it off the stage? No, we're going to take it. Oh. You mean you're going to hold up the stage? More than that. We're going to dress all in black and be sure that the outlaws see us when we pull the stick up. Well, what'll happen then? Well... That's what we're going to find out. Alibi, come here. What's it bothering you now, Elmer? Who's going to take that money to the stage office? Well, I am, I reckon. That's what I was afraid of. You better take me along to protect you. What if you'd get held up? I could hide the money. <laughs> well, that's a good idea, Elmer. <coughs> Take your fingers out of my mouth. What are you doing, pulling the tooth? No, I'm not pulling your tooth. I'm just trying to get this money out of here, Elmer. After all, it's your idea. Gosh. Now, here's a $10,000. Just a minute, you're $5 short. <coughs> oh, wait a minute. Here's one of them. 
gosh, I feel like the pig that swallowed the poke. That money sure tastes bad. How long you had it? Who is this little quirp? If it wasn't for me, he'd be broke. I'm his purse. Well, you sure don't look much like one. Well, if you think that you look like a Wells Fargo agent, you're a loco. <laughs> you ask for that one to strike. That's a lot of money. Where do you want it sent? To Flying R Ranch, Dry Gulch, Arizona. Here's your receipt. There will soon be 500 new head of cattle on the Diamond W Ranch. Well, come on, cowpoke. Let's go up the roundup. So long, hammerhead. <laughs> You better notify Ace and the boys they're riding this afternoon. Here comes Alibi. I sure hated to hand over all that good money. Well, what are you worrying about? It wasn't yours. How do we look? Colossal, in a small way. <laughs> if I didn't know you fellas so well, I'd swear you as natural outlaws. Here. Get into your outfit. Well, here comes the stage. Tim said for the stick-up. But I like this spot better. Now get going. Hold it. Hey, help. Yeah. Get it. What's going on down there? We better get them, hombres.
Tim and Douglas. We'll ride in and report to Tim Douglas. Right. Reckon nobody's home. Oh, so now I'm nobody. Howdy, Elmer. Where is everybody? Listen to him. Where's everybody? What he means is where's that pretty girl? <laughs> if you two weren't so love blind, you'd see that note propped up on the table. It's from Dory. I've gone into town with Tim Douglas. He thinks he knows where Ernie is. Dory. Oh, uh, we're as dumb as a couple of locoed steers. Something hit you? Yeah, when I was reading this note. Tim Douglas. Why, that's what that stage driver said to me. This ain't the spot that Tim set for the stick-up. Tim Douglas? Sure as shooting. Oh, Christ, we gotta prove it. Yeah, but first, let's go into town and get alibi. Then we'll find a way to prove it. Now, you'll have to do exactly as I tell you, Miss Dory, if you want to get your brother away safely. Are you sure we can go to Ernie? I'm positive of it. Now, one of my men found out where they're holding him prisoner. And I've sent out enough men to take care of the outlaws. I'll always be grateful to you, Mr. Douglas. Well, I've had to handle it without the sheriff finding out. Oh, I'm sure the sheriff would help us if he knows Ernie is innocent. Well, I'm sure he'd want to help you, particularly. They say that he's taken quite a strong fancy to you. Oh, I don't believe that's true. Can we go to Ernie now? Well, you'll have to get him across the border until this trouble is cleared up. Wait, I can simplify that too. Hey, strike. Strike, hitch up the buckboard and drive Miss Willard to the outlaw hideout in Pine Canyon. By now, my men will be there with Ernie Willard and turn him over to his sister. Be ready in a few minutes. I don't know how, thank you. Well, after your brother's safely out of here, then we'll talk about it. Did you want to see me? Yes, Mr. Douglas. I'll be waiting a minute. Well, I'll be running along. Good luck. Goodbye. Come on in, Ace. What's wrong with you? Plenty. There's been a stick-up. Well, I knew there would be. But it wasn't us. Those hombres from the Diamond W beat us to it. Well, I expected something like that would happen. Do you know who those hombres are? Some no-good drifters, if you ask me. No. Miss Willard just informed me that they're the range busters. The range busters? Why, I'll feel them... Not the so fast. Everything in its time. First, we'll let Ernie Willard be found. That'll satisfy public curiosity. But Arnie Willard knows enough to hang all of us. Not if he can't talk. Now, he'll be leaving the hideout this afternoon, headed south. You'll see that it doesn't get any further than High Point. He'll be driving a buckboard. High Point, huh? Yeah. Wait. You better let Red and Panhandle take care of it, and you stay at the hideout and see that Miss Willard doesn't go with her brother. I'll be out later. What about the range buses? That's why I want Miss Willard to remain. We'll use her to set a trap for them. You think of everything, don't you? You know, if the sheriff don't bring in them outlaws pretty soon, I'm gonna quit driving the stage. It's getting sore, and every time I see a rider coming toward me, I stick up my hands. <laughs> hey, Joe. Come on. Give the boys a drink of this good old Kentucky bourbon. Come on, boys. Have you? Uh, you quit drinking oh, yeah. and quit driving the stage, and you'll be better off. Huh? Like Alibi's parked himself inside the saloon, all right. Yeah, let's have a look.
any luck. A little. They stopped and got into the regular togs of the shack in Pine Canyon. Then they rode into town, and one of them headed straight for the stage depot. That checks. What check? Well, we'll tell you later. We're going over to the Wells Fargo office. Bring that stage drive over in about five minutes. You know, I'm gonna wait right here till the sheriff comes. I got an idea. I know just exactly how to catch them outlaws. Hiding the strong box, cause that's what they're always after. <laughs> Why don't you go home? I can't. The dog's in it. <laughs> Get mounted. I got a job for you two. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. If Tim Douglas wanted to see me, why didn't he come to the saloon? Oh, come on. I hope Alibi gets here before Douglas shows up. You're telling me. Oh, here he comes now with the stage driver. Here's your stage driver. Where's Tim? This wasn't the spot that Tim set for the stick-up. Who told you to say that? Why, that's what you said to the hombre that held up the stage. Ah, uh, you're loco. Ah, uh, maybe so, but just the same, that's what you said to me. Oh. So you is a stick-up man. And you talked yourself right into a tangle. All right, now come clean. Well, what do you want from me? Who planned that stick-up? I don't know. Did you do it? No, I didn't have any. Well, then who did it? Well, it was, uh... Who was it? Was Jim Douglas. And who else? Uh, strike Carnegie. Turn him over to the sheriff. And let him talk all he wants to. After you deposit that bomb and meet us out in Pine Canyon, we're riding out there now. Let's go, Dusty. Come on, I don't want to miss any of the fireworks. Get here. He's inside with a girl and her brother. The kid's kind of acting up. Maybe I can calm him down. I tell you, sis, I'm not going to run away. But Tim Douglas wouldn't advise you wrong. I'm sure it's for the best, Ernie. Well, it looks like you all can't agree. I tell you, I'm not running out. But the way things stand, Ernie, you can't prove your innocence. What I can't figure out is what you're doing here, why you're mixed up in this, or him. They're trying to help you. It's plain enough, isn't it? My men found this hideout, and the bandits lit out. Instead of taking you into the sheriff, they reported back to me. Think that over, Willard. Jake, keep your voice down. Now, what is it? Those hombres from the Diamond W. They cornered Jake and made him spill everything he knew about the stick-up. They'll have the sheriff on all of us. I'm pulling out of here. 
Looks like I'll have to handle you, too. I said I'm pulling out of here, and you ain't gonna stop me. I'll catch up with you, Strike. Not this time, you won't. I think there's a place Tim mentioned. We can pick them off easy from here. Douglas. Southeastern exposure for you.
Well, so long, Ernie. So long, Alibi. I'm sure glad we can leave Diamond W. with everybody knowing you was innocent. Well, I can thank the range busters for that. And Tim Douglas can thank them for being in jail for the next ten years. I wonder where them army partners of mine are. It's going to be lonesome here without you boys around. Well, we don't hanker to leave. Maybe we don't have to hurry away, Crash. Why, that'd be wonderful. It's always like this. We think it's over, and it only begins. <sighs> Sheriff, you better do your duty. If you don't, one of them pals of mine is going to steal Dory away from you as sure as shooting. This ought to do the trick. Howdy, Sheriff. Why, Denver, I didn't know you were here. <clears throat> I got business, ma'am. I hold a warrant for the arrest of three men known as the Range Busters. Say, what's this all about? That the said Range Busters on data four said did stick up and, in addition, hold up the Wells Fargo stage. Oh, fine stuff. I'm sorry, boys, but you'll have to ride into town, so you better hop into your saddles. Hmm. Hey, boys, how about me? Can't I go to jail, too? I reckon jail won't be any worse with you around. Well, goodbye, miss. Goodbye, miss, miss Dory. Good luck, boys. Here, take care of your offspring. Dusty, crash. You follow me and get away from that small time sheriff. Timber! <laughs> Why, it's nothing but a blank piece of paper. I know it. It's just something alibi framed up. It's the only way it could get him to ride. <laughs> you know, Miss Story, uh, it ain't easy for a man to leave a pretty girl like you. Does that go for you too, Denver? It sure does. <laughs> <laughs> well, we see. 